Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I show you how to use Google Nick Silver FX Pro plugin. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelly. I'm a French photographer living in Paris, and I make two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to get the raw file for this week's episode and all the past episodes. That will get you the link where you subscribe to my newsletter, and then we'll give you lots of newsletters with lots of amazing discounts. And click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In last episode, I showed you how to use 500px to promote your photos. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use Silver FX Pro to retouch and make this fine art black and white. That's the final result, and it's a really cool black and white plugin. But before that, I just want to announce that my friend Eric Geiser just came out with a new course called Virtual Reality for Photographer. Virtual reality is something that's been asked a lot if you should enter a design where you can really see 360 degrees. You can literally walk into a room just if you were there. It's an amazing course. It's an amazing tool if you're a photographer. So you should check it out. There's a full presentation at the end of this podcast. But for now, let's go and let's explore Silver FX Pro. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So I want to show you another type of workflow uh, for doing black and white. And this is a photo that I took as a lone exposure photography. And so you can see uh, the clouds are very s stretchy. This is very sharp. And the water is very silky. It's, it's an 83 second exposure at 7.1. ISO 200, don't ask me why it should have been ISO 100. That was my mistake. Uh, and I shot this, I believe, um, if you go to library, if you, I don't remember with what camera I shot this. Let's see metadata. Oh, I shot this with a Sony A7R, uh, Sony A7R, my new toy in life. And um, I really like the photo, and I just want to show you how you can use SilverFX Pro, uh, which is a Google plugin, which is really cool. Let me show you the website. Google bought this company a couple of months back, was called, uh, called more, sorry, more than that, uh, sometime, I think, a year ago. Uh, it was called Nick Software, and now it's called Google Nick Collection. And every software in there were around $220. And now, uh, Google, since they bought it, they're offering everything for $149, which is pretty crazy because it's really powerful software. And the one we're going to look at today is Silver FX Pro, uh, which is made to, uh, uh, to make black and white. And I'll show you how I work with this plugin. Uh, I have, you know, different workflows for different type of effects. Right now, we're going to go like for really like a fine art, a very um, dramatic effect. So this is the original photo, and I'm going to go to. So I always start off in the uh, develop module of uh, Lightroom. Let me press I to take this out, and um, I'm going to open up the shadows and bring down the highlights because I'm trying to get a sort of a washed out version of this. So uh, you know, by opening up the shadows, we get all the details and the highlights. We start seeing what's happening here in the sky. You see the color is very magenta, which although I'm a very big fan of magenta, I don't think it's very attractive colors. So it's a good candidate for black and white. Whenever you take a photo that you like the composition, you like the mood, but the colors are not amazing, try black and white. You will often be surprised. Okay, and um, maybe add a little bit of clarity, uh, but not much, because I don't want to have too much clarity in the sky. And I'll show you how, how to do that with Nick software. One thing that's very important is noise. I want to see uh, do anything with noise. Well, I shot at 200 ISO, so there's a little bit of noise, but really not much. So I'm going to go to detail, and I'm going to do maybe like you know 10 of noise reduction. Yeah, maybe 20 of noise reduction. And then I have this rule where I take 100 and I deduct whatever I did with the noise reduction. So I'm going to do 80 of sharpening. Okay. Uh, that's going to bring back the noise. But then, and that's what's amazing, I'm going to press the Alt key on my keyboard and I'm going to use a masking tool uh, of the sharpening. And I'm going to move this to the right until my sky is black, meaning it's anything which is black is not going to get sharpened. And boom. You've got a sharp wood, unsharp uh, sky. That's what we want. Okay, and one thing is the whole photo is not straight. So I'm going to go to a lens correction and use the amazing, and I must say, and I repeat, the amazing auto function in Lightroom, which is going to make this photo straight. I just need to click on constraints crop. It's going to crop it for me. Uh, remove chromatic aberration. It's not really useful because chromatic aberration is not doing a huge deal when in terms of uh, black and white, you know, uh, and profile correction can be okay. It's going to take all the vignetting out, which 
I thought of don't like, but uh, anyways. Okay, now I'm ready to uh, move into Silver Fix Pro. And so I'm gonna right click, edit. And once you installed all the Google uh, Nick software, they all will appear here. You don't even have to have Photoshop. So I can go directly in Sil Silver FX Pro 2. Uh, they have, I guess, a 30 day trial that you can give a try, you know, because $154 is money. I understand that. But it's um, it's a cool software if you want to get into black and white. So it's gonna, what it's going to make, it's going to make a TIFF file. And it's going to put it out there in a beautiful silver FX Pro. I'm not going to show you everything. I'm just going to show you my workflow. So here on the on the side, you got different preset like neutral. This is what we have: underexposed, overexposed, uh, high contrast, uh, high structure, blah blah blah. I never use the presets. I just never do use a preset. I mean, you can you know, you can look and uh, and get inspired by a preset. Uh, but on this one, like, yeah, that's kind of like an effect. I like that. But I want to do something more tailor-made. So I'm going to go back to default. Okay. And the presets also, you have the classics, the vintage, uh, favorite, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Preset are presets. Now, I want to show you how to, uh, you know, bake this yourself. So uh, first thing, one thing that I love about this thing is the structure. Structure is like a bit like clarity, but they have a way to make structure in each software. I think it's the, their big secret weapon. Check this out. If I move this to the right, it's going to make like clarity, but really on steroid. So it makes the whole thing like a lot grungy. I like what it does everywhere, but I don't like what it does on the water. And I don't like that it does it on the sky. So then this is where the amazing U control point comes in. U control point is this little round here. I click here and I click on the sky, for example. And the first setting here, I can make this bigger. The first setting is a circle, okay? Now, I can make that circle pretty big and put this in the middle. What that's going to do is detect, okay, what is the texture that's at this point? You see that yellow point? What is there? And and uh, try to detect that in that big circle. Then if I move the structure back, like I put it back to the left, what it does is that it leaves a very structure uh, wood, but it doesn't do it. Maybe I did a bit too much, but it doesn't do it in the sky. So that's one thing that I like, and I'm going to do the same thing for the water. I want the water to be very uh, fuzzy, and I just want the wood to be very, um, uh, very structured. So I'm going to take structure, and I'm going to on the water. I'm going to put this in minus. Okay, and just to be sure, I'm going to make one more point on the wood itself. Make a big circle on the wood and boost the structure. So I'm boosting the structure on the wood, and I'm taking it out on the water. Uh, yeah, I'm taking it out on the water. Okay. Um, Okay, that's before. That's not where we are now. Okay, it's already a lot more grungy looking. Uh, then I want to do one thing that's very important for me in this type of black and white is having a vignetting, and they have amazing vignetting. It's on the, uh, it's a, f it's a finishing adjustment, but I like to do it right away. So I'm gonna go to vignette, and I'm gonna go. You, you have different type of vignettes: lens full of one, lens full of two, lens full of three. The return of the lens fall off. Uh, I think I'm going to go for lens full of one, okay? Uh, and just maybe adjust the amount a little bit. I just, yeah, I'm, I think this photo can benefit some uh, vignetting. Okay. You know what? I, don't, I think I went too much on this overall structure. I want to come back to it. And now I'm ready to do my dodge and burn version Nick software. What I do is uh, I want to add more drama. So I'm going to go back to the control points technology. And I'm going to go here, for example, uh, make a circle that's about that size. I'm just going to make this a bit brighter here. OK, so because the eye is going to follow this and go to this place, maybe move this a little bit, make this part a little bit brighter. OK, um, same thing here. I want to make a U point here. And all I'm trying to do is complexify the lightning. You know, instead of having like an even gradient of light during all this wood, I'm just going to make this a little bit more bright. You know, uh, maybe like this. Okay. And uh, you can move it around, see how it is. All right. And um, let's go crazy. Let's make one more here. Okay, maybe smaller. I'm just trying to break the thing. Oh, another thing I forgot to show you, which is really cool. They have color filters. Basically, what they do is they, uh, they analyze the color 
version of your photo and they, they put it through a filter. For example, look at the red filter, how the red filter is going to make, because uh, it was a lot of warm colors. And so anything which is warm is becoming brighter. So I think that's the neutral, that's the warm filter. I think the warm filter, uh, the red filter is cool. You can check the yellow one, see how it is. Yeah, yellow and warm is pretty similar, but I think I'm, I like more the, the red ones. Okay, and then you've got colder. What color filter is going to do is um, anything which is cold is going to make bright. So the, the sky was very bluish, so it makes it very bright. Now, I'd rather have that. I get more contrast with, with that, okay? And um, so let's... Uh, uh, tonality protection, that's important. If you put it to the right, it's going to... What you're doing is going to less affect the shadows. So I might do this and on the highlights... I'll just move it around and see how it, how you like it the best. I think uh, I'm not going to protect the shadows there uh, because you see now they're kind of washed out. So I'm going to leave the protection at zero. Okay. And um, well, there's a lot more to it. You know, we can go for They have amazing uh, film type effect. Like uh, if you want to go, um, uh, for example, like add, uh, you know, like noise, like it used to be uh, in the old days, some film grain, you know, that's kind of cool. And um, on the f toning, they have a me amazing toning, like, you know, sepia type of look, you know, very different sepia, like this, for example, this, this, this. And I like, because you can see in real time how it looks like, you, you know. But I'm going to go for, on this one, I'm going to go for pure black and white. I'm going to go for neutral, okay? Uh, I think I want to add a bit of contrast of the overall. And, um, and maybe I'm going to add a bit more vignetting, a little bit. A little bit more vignetting, yeah. Make it, you know, I'm really going for that very, uh, very uh, grungy look. But the thing is, what I think is very important is on this one and on this one, like, you see how the sky, I did not do too much clarity on the sky because of, of this U point here, which is basically a minus a structure. So there's only structure here. I think it's very important, like, one of the mistakes I see people do a lot is they just put clarity everywhere. And I think it's really important to be selective. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe let's add a couple of viewpoints down here. Make them small. It's a bit like the radio filter, but it's uh, that you have in Lightroom. But it's got this sort of, uh, it's it's just a different look. And I, I, I like that technology. You know, so let's make, let make, oh, my good. Let's make this maybe a little bit brighter. Okay, let's go for one more here. Let's make this a little bit brighter, maybe. Something like this. So we play with contrast, you know. I want to one more here, maybe. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm just trying to break the evenness of the photo. I'm just trying to make this, yeah, you know, different things. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I'm going to click Save, and it's going to create a TIFF file that's going to be re-imported back in Lightroom. So no Photoshop is needed, you know. And... Um, it's a really cool plugin, and I usually give it a second pass in Lightroom. I give it like a, I mean, I like how it looks. I thought oh, there is a little dust here, so I can just take that out. A little sensor dust, which happens a lot when you do a long exposure. And um, I like to do the final touch, maybe, you know, make it this, open up the shadows a little bit more, just a little bit more, and bring down the highlights a little bit more, add a bit more contrast or not. Maybe boost a bit the exposure. Uh, I think I'm going to do a gradient, you know, I'm going to go gradient and you just miss, you know, mixing up two technologies. So I'm doing a little gradient here, lowering the exposure, and I'm just using different type of techniques to create an artistical effect. So I'm doing another gradient here with the same settings, you know, minus. I'm just trying to close the photo because I think the gradient was not enough. And um, I have the, the feeling that this is, this is not very straight, so I'm going to use the angle here. I'm going to follow the horizontal line. Yeah, it's not exactly straight. Okay, that's pretty cool. So that's the final result, you know, so a double processing first in Nick software, then in Lightroom. This is where we came from. Let me show you, let me reset this one. That's the original uh, out of the ND Filter 1000. I put a ND Filter 1000 to get that 82 second exposure. And I'm giving you that, re that raw files for free. So you can just, you know, download it. Uh, uh, for this, you have to subscribe to my newsletters, and uh, and then you um, and then you will get all my best promotions, and you will get this. I uh, hope you like this. I love the final result. It's very dramatic. It's like something really, you know, like ninjas are gonna come out or something. You know, it's wow. And I will see you in another episode, mesdames et messieurs. À tout de suite.
Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I'm very happy to announce that I have a new course coming out. It's called Virtual Reality for Photographer. I've been an interior design photographer for many years, and one request I got a lot was to make virtual realities. You know, this 360 panoramas where you can, with your mouse, walk around, ups, down, sides. It's amazing. You really get the feeling that you are there. So I called up my VFX friend, Eric Geisler, and uh, asked him to uh, show me how to do it because it cannot be done in Photoshop. So he's been using a software called PT GUI, which merges all these photos. He will show you how to shoot them, what type of gear you need to use, and I will do the retouching and he will do all the final merging. We're gonna do two projects. One project is gonna be his office, which is a really cool office in Hollywood. And then he's gonna go outside to the uh, Griffiths Observatory the, uh, in Griffiths Park, and he's gonna do a 360 panoramas of the outside. Two really cool projects. And uh, he's gonna show you also how to use the same images he took and make tiny planets with it. It's a really cool thing to do, very fun. So it's really an amazing tool that I wanted to master as a photographer because if you do interior design, if you work with architects, if you work with hotels, restaurants, or anybody that just wants to show a place, it's a tool you must have. So here is Eric Geisler, Virtual Reality for Photographer, an amazing course. All right, guys, I hope you're gonna check out Eric's course. It's really amazing. And I'll see you in the next episode. Au revoir.